Hello, uh, I am Paula. I am your acupuncturist. I thought I would do a couple of wee videos just to share with you most of the common questions and try and help alleviate any fears or anything that you might have um, about the appointment that you have just booked or are thinking about booking with me. So first off, I'm Paula. I own Health Rediscovered. I am a degree qualified acupuncturist. I qualified in 2007 uh, from Manchester and have been working ever since. Um, back in Glasgow, actually. Uh, I also spent some time in China, but this isn't about me right now. So you can get lots more information about me um, and I'll put some links in in case you're asking. Um, but what I wanted this video to be about was just to alleviate any fears, to, to help talk you through what to expect and what's going to happen. So I'm going to do it in a couple of different videos so that you can jump to the ones that are most important for you. So this one is going to be about what how to make the most of this session, how to make the most of your time with me. And I've got a few things to suggest. Uh, first of all, plan your journey. Uh, check that the trains are running, if it's the trains you're getting, seeing as how they seem to be uh, in, uh, we're at the start of 2023 when I'm recording this video and there's lots of train strikes going on and stuff, so they are quite unreliable at the moment. But plan that in. Make sure you know where you're coming. Um, there's also a link for a how to find us, but obviously it's a very local to where we are. Um, but also make a note of my phone number. Um, again, it's in all the emails that I send out. Uh, so if you've got any questions or you get lost, you can always phone me or text me. If I'm with a patient, I can answer my phone, but I can usually respond to a text. Um, that'd be the first thing. Plan your journey, work it out. The other thing is to think about what you're going to wear. So as a general rule for acupuncture, needles are approximately knees down, elbows down, um, abdomen, back and head. Okay, so think about what you're wearing if you're not comfortable stripping. <laughs> Make sure you've got kind of loose fitting trousers that will come up to your knees, um, sleeves that will, you know, unbutton or we can pull up relatively easy, um, shoes that come on and off relatively easy. Obviously, I appreciate that you're travelling and also be aware of that. And I'm going to give you a quick flash. That's my drawers there. Those drawers are basically full of comfort for you. They've got some of my supplies, but mostly... I've got like two drawers full of pillows. I've also got a drawer full of towels so we can protect your modesty. So if you're, you, if all you own is skinny jeans and I need to your knees, I'll get you to take your trousers off and just put a towel, off, towel over you to protect your modesty. Uh, I would recommend having clean undies on because I might see them. Um, possibly. I don't make a conscious effort to look, to be quite honest. Uh, something I will also say, because it's a, something that people say to me on the daily, is that I don't care in the nicest possible way if you are way, if you have shaved your legs, if you have had your nails done, if you have your period, if you are wearing 30 year old knickers, I don't care. Um, as long as you're clean, <laughs> that's a big thing. I would say make sure you're nice and fresh and clean. Um, not, you know, you have to shower 20 minutes before you come into the treatment room, but you know, don't be two weeks away from having lasted your shower. So relatively clean. Um, and dress in a way that we can get access to those areas. So roughly knees down, roughly elbows down, usually abdomen, but I'll talk to you about that, that. I'm going to put a bit more about that in the next video in terms of where needles go and stuff. But I've given you that now anyway. So that's what to wear. Um, the other thing I would say is about food and drink. So you're going to be lying on the treatment couch for approximately 40 minutes. So try to make sure your bladder's not full. We do have access to toilets here. So you're more than welcome to go. I would recommend if you think you might need to go, go when you come in. Um, I would need to give you access. If you've not been here before, you won't know that. It's the, the building's all very secure. Uh, so I would need to give you access, but it's not a problem. And I quite regularly just hand the key over to my patients because I know that as soon as they arrive, they're going for a pee. Quite a lot. I would say probably more people do that than not, to be honest. And that's absolutely fine. I would much rather be relaxed in my bed than freaking out lying there going, oh, should I go to the toilet? Should I go to the toilet? Okay. Um, so, but with that said, don't drink loads just before you come in. Um, because then halfway through the treatment, your bladder may well decide it's time to go. Uh, and depending on the time, I may not be able to kind of reinsert needles again and stuff. So just bear that in mind. Um, but nip into the loo before we start is absolutely not a problem. Um, in an ideal world, you won't have had any caffeine for at least four hours before the treatment. The longer, the better. But I know that's very difficult for a lot of people, so I'm not going to shout at you if you've not done it. But if you can, try and avoid caffeine at least for a few hours beforehand. It reduces your body's ability to relax, if nothing else. Um, 
And for me, one of the biggest things about having a treatment with myself is that I'm going to help you relax. Okay. The other thing I would say is during the treatment, switch off your phone. If you're wearing one of these fancy watches that I've not got, um, take it off would be my recommendation because otherwise you're just being disturbed. And as I say, for me, it's very important that you're nice and chilled and relaxed and that you get to switch off from the world. We very rarely give ourselves the opportunity to switch off these days. So if possible, switch off. I completely understand that in some circumstances, some circumstances, you need to keep your phone on you in case, you know, maybe your kid's not well and they've gone to nursery anyway or whatever and you're worried about them. So by all means, keep your phone on. But maybe mention it to me and yeah, but ideally, chill. Um... Also, please, 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 please tell me or any other therapist that you work with, whether it's me or not, if what we're doing isn't okay. Don't suffer, all right? We, any therapist that I've ever known, and I've worked with many uh, on many different levels, we're all here to help you feel better. And if you're not comfortable, either because the room's too hot or it's too cold or the bed's not right or something we're actually doing so if the pressure is not deep enough you know if you're having a massage and it's not deep enough or it's too deep i tend to do mostly kind of cupping and gua sha type stuff and i'll talk you through all that in the next video but also when i see you as well i'm not expecting you to have watched all of these but i'm just trying to give you as much information as possible um but tell us talk to me about it if you're not happy i need to know I'm not psychic. If you're freezing lying in my treatment room and it makes you never come back, I'd be absolutely devastated to hear that the only reason you might come back is my room was too cold or the bed was too soft or too hard or there wasn't the pillow wasn't right or anything. I genuinely want you to feel as good as you can when you're in my treatment rooms. So tell me. <laughs> and if I can make a modification for you, I will. There and then. If not, it's something I can look at working on in the future. I have things like electric blankets. I've got multiple heat heaters in each room. We're based in Glasgow. It's cold most of the year. Uh, I've done what I can to protect these beautiful windows. Um, just to try and keep you nice and warm and comfortable. There's always music playing. I've not got it on just now, but there's usually music playing in the room as well, just to help drown out all the background noise because it's a city centre location. As much as I would love to say it's silent, it's not. Um, that doesn't mean you can't relax. Um, but again, if you hate the music, tell me. I'll switch it off. We can put something of yours on. I can put something else on. Um, just talk to me about it. Okay, most people love the music, but that's beside the side. Um, but you don't have to. Um, the other thing I would say in, order, in terms of making the most out of your treatment is what you're doing after the treatment. So ideally, make sure that the rest of the day you've got nothing too major planned. I appreciate, again, that's not always possible. Sometimes you've got to go back to work and all the rest of it. And it does depend what you're coming for treatment for. But ideally, don't have loads on for the rest of that day. Um, plan out your meals so you don't have to go wandering around the shops. One of my favourite post-acupuncture stories actually involves going shopping. Um, so the patient was getting the train home and wanted to go into Marks and Spencer's, the one in the station. So a little tiny one in Central Station, if you can picture it. Very small shop for food. Um, and he'd gone in there after his acupuncture session. So, you know, stroted out the clinic, crossed the road, blah, blah, blah. Um, I was in the shop and he said, and, I was, and he told me this story at his next session. He says, I was wandering around the shop for a solid five minutes, looking at the stuff in the shelves. And I couldn't work out how to get it into my basket. <laughs> And that was because he'd picked up two baskets. So the image of that just forever makes me giggle. Some random person wandering around a very small Marks and Spencers with a basket in each hand, staring at stuff and couldn't work out how to get it off the shelf into his basket because his other hand wasn't available. I just find that story very funny. So be aware that more often than not, after your treatment, you're going to feel a little bit sleepy. Not like... I'm going to pass out. Nothing like that. Absolutely nothing like that. But just that sense that you've just woken up. You might not necessarily be fully with it. And sometimes for some people, that can take 20 seconds to sort itself out. For other people, it's a good 5, 10, 15, 20 minutes. Also, do not be surprised at all if you need to go to your bed earlier. If it gets to 8, 9 o'clock at night, you normally go to your bed at 10, 11 o'clock at night. And at 8, 9 o'clock, you're going, I'm showered. <sighs> 
don't fight it. If you can, if you've done all you can in the day, don't fight it. Just let yourself go to bed um, and have an early night. I can pretty much, <laughs> you can, what I have discovered in my 15 years is that I can never guarantee anything because it's the human body and the human body doesn't work that way for everyone. But for 99.9% .9 of the population, you will sleep better that night and you will go to bed earlier and you'll sleep right through and you'll wake up more refreshed, okay? Um, but be mindful of that when you're booking your session, particularly the first one, because um, you don't know quite how you're going to react. And usually the first one gives you a good indication of where your body's going. So after that point, you'll kind of know. It's like, do I need to book this after my work? Or can I get away with a lunchtime session? Does it really matter if I'm not fully with it after work, after lunch? I also find I've had multiple, multiple, multiple sessions of acupuncture over my 15-year career. Um, and even before, that's how I get into acupuncture. But again, it's not about me. But sometimes after acupuncture, I have this laser focus ability to get stuff done. So sometimes I'm full of energy and really focused and I can get a powerhouse of work done. Or <laughs> other times... I'm exhausted and I just need to go to my bed in a vaguely, and I wouldn't call it a drunken stupor because obviously it's not, but just in that slightly weird space um, of not being able to focus and all I really want to do is go to my bed. Um, so bear that in mind. <laughs> um, and if that means you need to reschedule an appointment because you didn't know that before you came in here today or before you listened to this video, um, if we need to reschedule you, that's absolutely fine. Um, that's all for this video. I thought I'd do it in little chunks. So the next video is going to talk more about what's going to happen in the treatment rather than just general information. So this is about making the most. So loose, comfortable clothing if you can. If not, be prepared that I'm going to probably take your trousers off. I'm not going to take your trousers off. I'm going to ask you to take your trousers off. Empty your bladder. Make sure you've not had caffeine. Try not to have too much planned afterwards. Did I mention food? I can't remember if I mentioned food. Make sure you've eaten. Don't come in an empty stomach. Again, particularly the first session, don't come in an empty stomach. So eat within a couple hours of coming or even just have a snack if that, you know, timing works out that it's not quite meal time. Have a snack, so a bit of fruit or whatever. Whatever your snacks are, eat that first. Um, yeah, I think that's all for now. So that's the summary. <laughs> Avoid caffeine, have a snack, loose comfortable clothing and make sure your bladder's not full, essentially. Um, and don't have too much on afterwards and switch your phone off. Give yourself an hour's peace. Or an hour and a half for the first session, but an hour's peace. I uh, hope that makes sense. And I'm looking forward to seeing you. Bye for now.